What's up guys, it's Chris and Aaron, and we've been living and working in our Airstream for just under a full year now. Did we pick the right rig? In this video, we're gonna go over the two living spaces, the kitchen, the bathroom, the electronics, and finally, the chassis of our 2014 Airstream Interstate Sprinter. Let's go. So this is living space number one. The layout was a huge part in our deciding factors of purchasing this van and we wanted to have two separate living spaces. This is where I spend most of my days and most of my evenings actually. I use this area as my office during the day. I do all the driving so I'm always sitting here for my driving. And usually at night I sit and have my dinner here too because I like to have a little table when I eat. So I spend a lot of time here. This actually is three different spaces. It's an area where we can just sit and lounge and hang out. It's also a dining area. And like Chris said, it is her work area. We really do like this space quite a bit. If I sit in my chair here, one thing that I wish it had and that could be easily added on would be a flip up desk that would even kind of pop out here and you know give me a nice flip out like this guy right here yeah because if i didn't have this i wouldn't like sitting up here yeah everything needs to be built this in and easily accessible in a van like this tabletop is nice and it works very well but and it takes two seconds to set up but you have to get the leg out you got to set it up and then it kind of oh it blocks this space right here so it's also nice for me too because I have this outlet down here so I can charge my laptop while I'm working and anything else that needs charging. Um, if I didn't have the outlet, again, it'd be one less convenience that it just wouldn't feel like an office for me. I think from here we'll get into the second living space and that's what's kind of unique and what helps us um, function because we're both in here all day working and we live in here. It's nice to have a space up here so Chris can sprawl out and work and then I work in the back so we'll... a little separation yeah a separation but like a 10 foot separation <laughs> so this is living space number two and like Chris said it is very versatile having this second space so this dubs as four rooms for us. I think it's a lounge that we just sit and hang out in, watch a movie, something like that. It's also our bedroom. It's also my office during the day. And also a table goes up right here where you can have uh, up to five people dining. So yeah, the true dining area. Yeah, we absolutely love it. Like I said, the living uh, layout space was, was very key for us. I know a lot of people like fixed beds and a lot of people like the convertible style beds for us we needed a lounge uh convertible bed in the back so let's go over real quick the different layouts that we have so we said the first one was a lounge where we like sit and hang out um there used to be a tv right here that kind of stuck out that could flip around that we took out and now we can just you know set an ipad there or we can you know have a, a laptop um and watch a movie there but for just a lounge like at night or if we're out visiting cities during the day and we need a place just to hang out and take a little break from exploring uh this is kind of like where we would sit and lounge you have nice windows it's nice dark tinted so people can't see in but you can see out and enjoy the yeah the and area. what's also nice is if you open the closet door it serves as shutting the lounge door so when we do want privacy we can shut the door and we use the door um, for multiple different reasons. If we're in the city and we want to be stealth, we'll shut the door so that people don't see us. Mm -hmm. And there's also not a big like curtain in the front that screams we're sleeping in here. Yeah, so if we're city boondocking, we don't put up the curtain in the window to make it look like somebody's in here. We let the front just be the front and then we close the door in the back and we're tucked away in the bedroom. We also use the door for changing. If we want privacy to change clothes, we'll shut the door, shut these windows, and then you have a changing room. Yeah, that's a nice like space where you can actually move around. This is probably like the largest space for, for yeah, me really being is. six foot two. You know, I got a little bit of space here and it's a nice like, it's really like a mini bedroom. It's like a six foot by 
six foot bedroom. Yeah. So the next space we'll talk about back here will be um, the dining area. So right on the floor is another little table mount where that same table up front will sit right here. We have one pole and one tabletop that you can use either in the rear or the front. There's space back here for five. So three on the back bench and one on the left side and one on the right side. There is a cabinet right here that uh, kind of gets partial. So it's not an ideal space, but Chris sat there and we had dinner with four people where it was one, two, three, four, and it was very comfortable. Yeah. If you put up the table, you're kind of like shimmying around and it's fine, it's doable, but it's not the same like as having open space. So that's kind of a, a big deal where we just don't set up the tables that, that often. Yeah, so. we really don't. There are some cup holders back here. Yeah, actually, I wanted to talk about the cup holders real quick because that's pretty unique to the Airstreams. Um, they put cup holders over the dually tires back here, and they actually double as storage underneath the cup holders. Mm. Most vans don't have any cup holders in the back, or if they do, it's a little flip down that comes off the side here. So these nice, sturdy um, platforms are really nice as it's a lounge. It makes it feel a lot more spacious in here yeah so the dining area is nice um i guess um critiques would be once again a lagoon style mount which i think they're putting on the new airstreams now and i'm sure some of the other bands have them but uh, anything that can be built in is good uh so next we'll talk about the third space back here which is my office um and so how i do that i don't put up the table um i have a kind of a um a laptop desk that I pretty much just use back here with a laptop during the day this is where I work in the back and I have the nice space and nice windows and it's enjoyable I really like it I have no complaints about the back office and Chris is just a, a wave away let's go over the storage real quick in here so the storage in the back here is pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with it um we have these cabinets here i keep my clothes and uh kind of like underwear and socks and some toiletries in here um i also keep some clothes it's now turning into like camera gear <laughs> more and more like camera bags and gopro accessories and stuff like that um but once again good um space with that these cabinets themselves are plywood with a nice veneer top and these heavy duty springs we've never had any issues with these um pulling out while driving so also in the back is our largest cabinet this is where we keep our pillows and our comforter we have a down comforter sheets blankets there's a yoga mat in here and then on both sides of these is another 12 inches of storage where we put the yeah so that extends all the way yep. back this way and that's a lot of winter clothes and jackets and rain jackets and like things like that that we need to have but we don't use all the time so it's pretty cool to have that much storage up top here we'll go over the electronics later but for the bedroom portion um this is our laundry basket it's you know nice 12 inches by like four or five inches so it's <laughs> it's not very big but that's where we keep our dirty clothes and we try to do uh, laundry like once a week and it works out pretty well for us. So, and the last one is this larger cabinet right here. This is where the TV used to be. And Chris keeps her clothes in here. And you can see how big this is um, for folded space. So that's pretty nice. What I like about Airstream is that they have these jumpers that are on a hinge like this, so they make it very nice and quick and easy to pop down instead of having a separate cushion here and a separate one here and stuff flowing, flying around it makes it easy so the downside of it is you do have this metal bracket which is padded but if, if you jump into bed and you hit your hip on that it does hurt right there so this is our large queen king bed but it's a little bit short for aaron because he's 6'2 i mean i can lie down like this but when you sprawl out, I need just another couple more inches that way. So this is the bedroom door like that. 
And that's the really unique thing about this coach is now, I mean, look at that. That's like a bedroom, literally like a bedroom right there. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. We definitely like that. Yeah, it's so incognito. On to uh, one thing I don't like about it for the bedroom. So this is, they call it a day shade. That's called a nightshade, but it's still very opaque. And any type of light at night will shine through this and vice versa going outwards. So, and one thing I like about Airstream is this little piece of wood here, a shelf. So you can actually fit like a, a can of pop or water or something right there. Um, or you can just, you know, it's a little tiny shelf, so. Yeah, it works really nice. It's nice to have. For lights back here, there is one bedroom light switch like that. And then the overhead lights on the ceiling are on the big main switch out front. But it does have one nice bedroom and two reading lamps. The only down part about the bedroom that I can think of is you and your partner really need to be on the same page as far as taking naps because and like bedtimes like and what do you mean by taking naps <laughs> well, how old are you <laughs> you need to both get up at the same time and go to bed at the same time and if you're on different sleep schedules then the convertible bed is probably going to start some fights in your family like there's some nights where i'm like okay Aaron, let's make the bed because i just seem to get tired earlier <laughs> thing I really like about this is the light switches are kind of like house light switches here and I like it so you got the patio uh, your step hold right there this has tank heaters on it which we haven't had to use yet uh, and there's 22 actually 23 LEDs in this coach uh, if you include the outside but inside there's 22 LEDs so uh, it's very nice and bright um, the aisle lights bathroom lights ceiling lights and, and then the main ceiling lights are on a dimmer too so we really like that so you can get all 10 leds uh dimmed down way low and that's kind of like a nice low setting it's a really nice dimming system yeah the lights top notch we have no complaints and there's three underneath the uh, kitchen here along with an outlet um, and those are on a light switch here the water pump is right here also which is nice and centrally located because it's next to this sink and it's next to the bathroom so yeah and i love these lights for when i'm cooking i yeah. use them all the time when i'm cooking dinner but on to the uh, kitchen i'll let you handle that chris the kitchen i love this kitchen again it's one of the reasons why we picked this unit because there's a lot of space in the kitchen there's a lot of counter space sure there are some units that have more but there is a lot more units that have less space. So when I have these down, I have a lot of cabinet counter space and then I extend that and I have even more counter space and then flip up, you have your classic RV style stove top, which is a two burner. I like the stove top, it's okay. Um, I do use both burners quite often. The only thing I don't like about this is that it gets really grimy and dirty. Like you can see just heat marks on here. And every time I clean it, I have to take these things out and then like these fall off. So I have to make sure I account for all these things. And it just takes time to clean because there's so many nooks and crannies and like getting in here. But as far as functionality goes, it works great. We love having these grates so that we can put corn tortillas on here. We eat a lot of corn tortillas, make a lot of tacos. So that's our stove top. Uh, we have the sink. It's not anything too fancy. Um, it would be nice if the bowl was deeper and larger. Like I can't fit my 12 inch skillet in here. So I use my 10 inch skillet mostly because it fits easier in the sink to wash it. Um, this thing gets in our way. If you leave it up like this and then you close the lid, it turns your sink on which if you're not listening or paying attention, you could very easily lose all your water and fill up your gray tank while you're at it. I think that's the number one complaint that people have talked about. And here's my solution for it. If they made this little knob here, which we could replace if we can find that same size thread longer. So if this knob was like this, um, or maybe not that long, but a little bit longer. Something exaggerated. It's, it's better for um, function Ergonomic. so you can actually use it. 
but then you're not going to you're not going to leave it up because it's a lot more exaggerated you know it's not this little tiny nook that sits up you know a, a quarter inch it'd be something that sit up sits up a few inches that you'd know right there yeah instead of right there so that's the number one complaint i think everybody has about these sinks but otherwise it works very well nice. and functionality is uh pretty decent so. while we're at this level of the room um a big dislike of mine is the ultra suede this is really a bad idea for a kitchen backsplash because you can see this is just from like that but anyway besides that like when i'm cooking yeah we would like to see this be like a stainless steel stainless or like steel this, or whatever this material is like a brushed aluminum if they just carried the brushed aluminum down that would be really nice because you get splatters like you can clean them out a little bit with some dry paper towel yeah but it, it's easily fixable that's for sure like we could take this piece out and re-upholster it with something else so it's it, the nice thing is that it's not something that we you know can't easily change yeah. it's not like a thousand dollar project it's something that we could easily fix but otherwise we have a full kitchen tour that we'll link that video to um it just shows you a little bit more of what's in my cabinets but we have basic storage up here a lot of cabinet space which is really nice we have a nova cool 3.1 lead 3.1 cubic foot mm -hmm. fridge and it's tight it's a dorm size fridge it fits about a week's worth of food for us and i've gotten really good at figuring out exactly what i can cram in here and it I, it takes me a lot of time to you got to tetris it all in and so after a big shopping day this thing is just crammed and it's really almost obnoxious because for the first few days after that anytime you want something you have to kind of pull everything out to get to whatever it is you want and then puzzle it all back in and it takes a lot of time like anything in a van just takes longer because you're moving 12 things to get to one thing and putting it all back and it is a compressor driven 12 volt 120 uh fridge so it runs off our batteries or when we're plugged in it runs off of 120 and we do like that i would not want a propane fridge i would not want to no. have to mess around with that no. this so. is a big wardrobe this is one of the two wardrobes in the unit that makes it the double wardrobe floor plan so we keep a lot of food in here a lot of tupperware coffee like this is all pantry stuff these are all pantry stuff this is pantry and then we also use it for toiletries like toiletries and just basic storage so this is a big part of how we are able to shop in bulk how we're able to keep a lot of food on hand like we're never gonna starve in this thing our next wardrobe closet is back here this also is the bedroom door that we were talking about so you can see when this door is open it's really our bedroom door being shut and you can see that's the privacy door that we referenced many times and then inside here i have all my kitchen pots and pans like this is my heavy duty stuff up here so i'm in and out of this multiple times per day for each meal let me interject real quick i feel like i'm the negative guy so the down <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. the downside of of having our pots and pans super high like this is that they're heavy and you know you don't want them tall so we don't have a big pots and pans drawer in this particular layout um so that's one thing we're missing where it'd be nice to be able to have a big drawer on the bottom where we could put our pots and pans so our clothes has a built-in light and down here we have shoes we have all of our bubbly waters and then this is really another overflow area where if we have things that we need to store and we don't have a spot to temporarily store it we sometimes just shove it into the shoebox. Yeah, this is a huge, huge closet. It's really big. And eventually I'd like to get some built-ins and some shelves put in and it would be really, really nice. It's such a huge space. So that's the kitchen. Check out our full tour kitchen video if you are eager to see more of that. Next, let's talk about our wet bath. Uh, what I love about this is it has the classic Airstream bathroom window this is like my number one thing that i loved about the nice touches that airstream puts in their in their vans um it just speaks to me and i love it so the wet bath we do have a shower in here we do use it as a shower regularly we 
got used to it. It takes a little bit of getting used to, you know, if you're in a wet bath, it's, it's a wet bath. So, um, it's a tight fit. Like it's a very comparable size to an airplane bathroom. So Aaron has to slouch a little bit to fit in there. Yeah. So you can see it's not quite as tall as it is outside. There's a little bit of a gap there. So that makes it very tight shoulder wise. You know, I'm pretty much shoulder to shoulder. So you do need to kind of turn this way. Um, it is extremely sealed in here. So I guess, you know, it's a nice one piece shower bath. We do like that for sure. The small exhaust fan up top works fine. There could be a little bit of storage here, but what you would have to like watch out for, a lot of people think you can just add a bunch of storage back here. But if you're sitting like this, you know, my head pretty much takes up all that space right there. So you really have to kind of keep it open. Otherwise it's, it's super small. So it's a totally usable space. We're really happy we have it. Um, mm -hmm. but if you've never used a wet bath before, it's a big difference than a dry bath. Um, you have to shower at the same time, <laughs> not at the same time. You have to shower one after another. Um, it's completely soaked in here. So right after you're done showering, uh, it stays wet and it's tough to use the bathroom for a few hours. And yeah, so that's the bathroom next. Electrical. So the electrical to go over real quick, um, there's a thousand watt Magnum inverter that it comes with. Um, there is two Lifeline 24, uh, group 24 batteries that it comes with normally, which are 85 amp hours. And this one came with a 50 amp optional solar panel. So that was pretty crucial for me because I knew I was going to upgrade the solar right away. So we put 300 watts of solar in place of that 50 watts and I put a Victron uh, charge controller in there instead of this one. I'm going to actually remove this at some point and probably put like a 12 volt outlet right there just for, you know, charging cell phones, things like that. Um, and then also the batteries, since we live in this full time, we swap them out to Lifeline 6 volt, uh, 300 amp hour batteries. So we have nice two big batteries back there, which gives us a usable 150 amp hours um with that supplemental 300 watts of solar so that is a decent amount for us to use full time it's obviously not as uh big as the lithium setups and you know a thousand watts of solar but um it works pretty well for us right now i do need to do a follow-up video on our actual usage um i did do a video on changing the batteries out but uh just to kind of go over our thoughts on what we need and where we're gonna be kind of moving to in the future. There's also a Cummins 2500 watt generator on here, which has the automatic start, which is nice. That powers the entire coach. You can see there's only 18 hours on here. We don't use that a whole lot just to kind of exercise it. Um, this precision control circuitry, um, when you're plugged in or your generator's on, it basically just uh, meters things so that you don't have too much running at the same time, like your water heater and your air conditioner, it kind of like uh, will uh, cut off different things that, uh, so you don't blow a circuit basically. It has a Atwood six gallon XT water heater that is gas and electric. The tank test down here, black, gray, fresh, and propane. The black is 15 gallons, the gray is 27, and the fresh is 26 and the propane is 19 gallons so it's a really big propane tank um, we did do a video also on how long our tanks last us which is kind of an interesting test if you want to check that one out but uh, overall we're very happy with the sizes of our airstream of course bigger would always be better but in a van there's just not really that many options um, so we're pretty happy with the sizes there and then kind of lastly up here is our electronics storage we use the verizon unlimited hotspot we have the wii boost uh right back here you can kind of see turn on and all of our batteries there's outlets back here um we have a wi-fi wise camera that we use when we're in the cities and particular bad neighborhoods and this overhead storage kind of just does a lot of our uh miscellaneous stuff um screens up here also this is a a screen that uh 
we put in the door, which is nice to have. So let's move out front real quick and we can talk about the chassis and the cab and we'll end this long video. Yes, so the chassis. Let me just say that I love this diesel. And my, my biggest memory for me was the first time that I drove it up a mountain. It practically just pulled itself right up the mountain, which I've never experienced with any of my small cars. And it's a really powerful machine. I love driving this. So it does take diesel gas. So that's something that you always need to be aware when you're looking for a gas station, just make sure they have diesel. Yeah, we use a gas app called Gas Buddy, which you can filter down to just diesel gas stations and it shows you the cheapest around and only diesel gas stations so it, that thing has saved us it's hundreds nice. over the past year we usually end up getting 16 to 18 miles per gallon which is really really good it does use the def exhaust system so you have to monitor your def fluid and sometimes you know that's one thing that scares people and you know aaron and luckily aaron has a lot of knowledge in auto industry and stuff so he's not intimidated at all by the maintenance that goes into this and we don't think you should be either if you're considering getting the sprinter chassis it's a super comfortable drive i've never driven an rv before and this was a very easy transition you obviously need to take some adjustment period like this is really heavy it's really tall and it's a little bit long so you just have to drive slow really slow take turns super slow get used to people honking at you flicking you off like people see a sprinter and they think that i can just bop around like an amazon delivery guy can but they don't understand that there's eleven thousand pounds of rv components and possessions in here so i'm just not able to go fast but you get used to embracing the pace also, there's a, a wide angle backup screen here, and then we put um, a backup camera down here too. So we have two backup cameras, mm -hmm. which helps out quite a bit. But the, the front cab is extremely comfortable. Travel days are nice. We usually stick to about 250, 300 miles for a comfortable travel day. Obviously you can really drive all day long if you need to, but we found that to be our distance that we prefer. So this is uh, the 3500 model for the Sprinter. It is the dual rear wheel on the 170 wheelbase. It's not the EXT model. Um, we needed new tires when we got it, so we put on some Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax. They're like an all-terrain tire that fits these particular Sprinters. And that was a good option. So it's not really for like off-roading, but they look pretty rugged. Yeah, they look rugged. We actually met some good friends because of the tires. Like it's, we call them conversation starters because people <laughs> see that and they just like to talk about the tires. Yeah. Um, some most people think it's four-wheel drive, um, or they'll ask, you know, how much off-roading do you do? Which of course you can't really bring this thing on a crazy trail, but it helps. You know, our campsite's like flooded right now. I mean, some of, some of these people are in like three inches of standing water, which turns into mud. And mm -hmm. um, so I've seen people get stuck before. So we just put them on more as a safety measure and um, we don't know, you know, where we're gonna be and, and what conditions. So it's good to have some uh, some tires like that, I think. Yeah, I love the tires. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I think that's about it. I hope this video wasn't too long and drawn out. We just, it's hard to do a, a tour. We've struggled. Obviously, it's a year later. We've never done a tour on the van. Uh, it's hard. It's a, such a big video. There's a know. lot of areas to go over. There is. I feel like a van tour could be like an hour. And you don't want to do it short. Like, you, you want to give justice to it. It's tough that way, but... Um, I think we covered some some main good points. If Hopefully. there's anything we didn't cover, leave a comment below, ask a question, and we'll get back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Ask any questions you want about it or any full-time type of questions. We have a lot of Airstreamers, uh, some AIs that are following us now, which we appreciate you guys uh, following along. And we do health, fitness, full-time RVing, and travel. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Otherwise, we'll catch you next week. See you next week.